Hello there! Hey, welcome to Thursday! Wow, you know it's getting close to the end of the school year. And uh, we're going to be starting a new chapter in math. Unfortunately, not able to finish chapter 11, but we're starting it this week. And so we'll work on it more next week and then, I'm sorry, that's all that we're able to do. Well, I want to, before we start chapter 11, we need some prerequisite skills review. And so we're going to go uh, today to the page in chapter 11. It's called Review re, re, uh, Prerequisite Skills. And let's see what kinds of things would help us in chapter 11 to be successful. All right, first off, there are some review words that in, are in today's practice. And so I want to just go over those, some of the things just to remind about how to do these things correctly on your paper, and you'll need graph paper. All right, in fact, uh, the graph paper would be a great idea for chapter 11, everything on graph paper. Well, first off, uh, let's look at some review words. Ordered pair. An ordered pair, we know, has to do with a coordinate grid. This is called a coordinate grid. And an ordered pair are, are two numbers, right? So it's a pair, it means it's two numbers. And these two numbers, we found out already this year, have a special order to them. All right, so here I have in parentheses the ordered pair four, two, all right? Now, it's very important that four, I say, is first, and then the two. That's an ordered pair. Now, the ordered pair forms the coordinates of a point on the coordinate grid. So the ordered pair tells you something about where to place that point. Now, we learned uh, something about a coordinate grid when we talked about uh, hurricanes, and we were plotting hurricanes using uh, latitude and longitude. We learned our particular latitude and longitude for the Tampa Bay area. Can everybody remember what it is? What is our latitude? All right, 28 degrees north. And what is our longitude? 82 degrees west. Now, when you, when you have those two lines intersect, that's where we are in the Tampa Bay area. All right, so anyway, that's, what, that's an ordered pair. 28 degrees north. 82 degrees west, that's an ordered pair giving the coordinates of Tampa Bay area, basically. All right, so uh, I want to review here. When you have a coordinate grid, we have two axes. We have this one going across horizontally, it's called the x-axis. And we have the one that goes up vertically called the y-axis. I don't know why, but that's what it's called, y-axis. All right, so, and then the lines get numbered. Now, I know there are going to be some of you that are numbering spaces on a coordinate grid, and you'll put a one between these two spaces. These, no, don't do that, please. No, we number the lines in a coordinate grid. The ones going uh, vertically or the ones going horizontally each get a number. Here I've numbered this line going up here, one. That line's two. So these vertical lines each have a number up to ten. The horizontal lines each have a number up to eight in this one. And zero, zero is called the origin. So the origin is always zero, zero on a coordinate grid. All right, so again, just a reminder about some things you're going to do in your practice. Of course, use graph paper. I would recommend that. Now, in the ordered pair X, the first number tells you how to move on the X axis. So here's the X axis going this way. The first number tells you how to move on that. The second number tells you how to move on the Y axis. Yeah, I don't know. But anyway, the Y axis. So this one, if they're positive numbers, right? tells you how far to go across. The first number tells you how far to go across on the x-axis. The y-axis, if it's a positive number, all right, it tells you how far to go up on the y-axis. So let's plot these. All right, so I have here four on the x-axis, two on the y-axis. So I go, starting at the origin, I go four lines over, and then two lines up, all right? And I plot that point, and I'll call it 4, 2. Let's try this one. 8, 5. So 8 tells me how far to go on the x-axis. I go 8 over. 5 tells me how far to go up, and because it's a positive number, I plot that point, and there's the coordinates for that point, 8, 5. So do that on your paper. Make it really nice and neat and uh, show by uh, labeling the points which one is which. Something else that we, uh, we learn, and we're going to be applying also, is about uh, some of the polyons and figures and things like that that we have uh, looked at in geometry. And uh, actually, I want to move back to over here to this. We learned about congruent figures. Congruent figures don't have to face the same way. That's, that's one of the keys. 
These two triangles, I'm telling you by all the symbols, are congruent. That means they have the same size and the same shape. Right? They aren't just the same shape and one's you know, bigger than the other or small. It's the same size and the same shape. Now you notice that angle corresponds to this one. They're the same. Here, this angle corresponds to this one over here. They would be the same measure. This, these uh, angles have the same measure with the three marks. And then I have this side corresponds to that side. This side corresponds to this one with the two marks. And this one with the three marks corresponds to that one with the three marks. And I'm, I'm telling you, even if you know, they don't look perfectly the same, I know. But I'm telling you by all those symbols that they are congruent. All right? All right. So that's one of the things you, we also want you to remember. You know, if, uh, at the end of the quarter, we're going to be averaging your grades. And then that's how we determine what's on your report. Actually, you get a grade. I don't give you grades. You earn your grades, right? I don't give grades. You earn them. And here's what we, let's suppose you have a 96, a 74, and an 86 on some tests and some subject, uh, the basket weaving class. Okay, so you got a 96, a 74, and an 86. To find the mean, it means basically the average. That's what we call the average. So we add those three numbers together. I get 256. And divide it by the number of atoms. I see one, two, three atoms. 256 divided by three works out to be 85 with a, a repeating three, a repeating decimal. So 85.3 repeating. So I marked it like that. That's called the mean. So you add and then divide to find the mean or the average of numbers. Now I got one more thing to say before you get to work on today's prerequisite skills for chapter 11. All right. Um, first off, this coordinate grid here is a little bigger. And I've gone out a little farther uh, on the x-axis and up on the y-axis farther. That's because when I looked at all these coordinates that I need to plot on this, I thought, you know, uh, these ordered pairs, I could see the x-coordinate, the largest one is 8, okay? So I need to go at least out 8. I actually went farther, okay? I'm looking at the y-coordinates, 1, 4, 4, 2, 2, 5, 5. I need to go at least up 5. And I went a lot farther than that. Okay, so but by looking at the coordinates before you draw your coordinate grid, you can tell how big you need to make it. All right. So here you're told plot the points, draw, connect the dots. I love that first grade, man. That's one of my favorite things. I can still remember connecting dots. <laughs> that was neat. Now uh, you connect the dots and tell me what kind of uh, polygon it creates. All right. So here I have two over, one up, three over, four up. I don't go any over, zero over on the x-axis, four up. I plotted those and then I connected the three. Now what kind of, it's a three-sided figure, so it's called a what? Great, a triangle. And that's what you have to answer. What kind, of, what kind of figure does it make a triangle? Again, I'm going over what you're gonna see in the practice today. How about this one? Obviously I got four vertices here, D, E, F, and G. And so uh, you can label them that way too. Two, one, A, three, four, B, 0, 4, C, and then do the same thing for these. 6, 2 is D, 8, 2, E, 6, 5, F, 8, 5 is G. All right, so uh, I labeled all the points up here, and then I, I connected the dots, the vertices, and guess what? I'm I know it's a quadrilateral. Now, folks, if you told me quadrilateral, I wouldn't mark that wrong, right? I wouldn't. But uh, if you said parallelogram, I'd say, hey, yeah, that is a parallelogram. I'm going to decide the parallel. That's good, too. But I want the most. You know, what's the best description of that? Well, it's a quadrilateral parallelogram with square corners in it. Don't look at me when I say square. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So it has square corners like that. So I am going to call it a rectangle. That's the best description of that. Well, that's the kind of stuff that you're going to be asked to do in today's prerequisite review for chapter 11. Hey, I want to tell you something. I've asked my sister to come and teach a lesson in this chapter before the end of the year. Uh, it, it said I had to model something. I do not model, okay? That's a very embarrassing thing for a guy to try to do is model. All right, but my sister took modeling classes when she was younger, and so she's going to model a math concept coming up, all right? So you be looking for that, and you have a great Thursday. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.